God, our hearts have found rest in you. They have found joy in you, forgiveness in you, and peace in you. We need you. We need to see you. We need a God that's bigger than we can put in a box. We need you to pull us out of this small, dark, stifling self that we live in and pull us into life. We need to breathe. We need to be lost in wonder. We need a God. When I think of the self-proclaimed atheist that said, I don't believe in God, but I miss him. Lord, our hearts are, well, we were made to be in relationship with you and captivated by you and to be pulled up into your life and who you are. Speak to us this morning. Please speak to us this morning where we're at, every one of us. You said you're alive, so speak to us and give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a seat. There's a really cool video coming. (laughs) Do you celebrate Easter? Um, Yeah, a little bit. Do you celebrate Easter? No. Do I celebrate Easter? No. Do you celebrate Easter? Yes, I do. What's so important about Easter? What's it all about? I believe it's because the day of Jesus was born, or it has to do with God. Why do you celebrate Easter? it's a fun family time. Is there any significance to why we recognize it as a holiday? I don't recognize it as a holiday due to my religious beliefs. Do you celebrate Easter? Mm, not really. I just know that you pick up Easter eggs on Easter. Why do you celebrate Easter? Because uh, my parents did. What do you think the significance of Easter is? What's it all about? Uh, it's about uh, Christ. Uh, the Christ of... Uh... Why do you celebrate Easter? Because that's how I grew up. What's it all about? I don't know. What's the significance of Easter? Um, I really don't know. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yeah. You know, that's the historical meaning of the holiday. Oh, really? That's it. Learn something new every day, don't you? Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yes. Do you know that's the significance of the holiday? I do now. I know most people celebrate it about Jesus, but I'm not religious, so. They say Jesus rose from the dead, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's uh, something of Jesus, I don't know. Well, I think it has something to do with, like, God, or I don't know. I don't really know that much, but... Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Is that... I really don't know what I believe. That is a really good question, isn't it? Do you know what you believe. Now, if you come in here this morning, you're going, man, I'm not sure about what I believe, then you came to the right place. This is, this is what we do at Grace. This is how, who we are at Grace. We get together on Sunday morning because we don't know what we believe about a lot of things, and it's important, and so we press into these things and want to know what God says about it because this is our first trip through life and we've messed it up really bad. And so we're trying to find some direction and some life and we've got to figure out what is it that we believe because it's really important because you understand that what you believe, not what you say you believe, but what you really believe, it will propel your entire life. It informs your life. It drives your life on every aspect, every single day. <laughs> like when they asked the little guy, listen, why did you hit your sister? He said, because I believe she deserved it. <laughs> right? Right? Why did you buy that? Why did you do that? Why did you respond that way? Why are you pursuing that? Why did you marry them? It's because you believed it was the right thing to do. You believed and were convinced that this is what you wanted. You believed that this was gonna satisfy you. See, everything that we do, everything that moves us, 
and informs us and shapes how we see our world is driven by what we believe. So, man, welcome. Um, Every week we get together and we look at these things and we learn because this is transforming our lives. Well, this morning it's Easter, right? So we want to look specifically at that question, what do we believe about Easter? And you wonder, well, why that matters. It matters a lot because for a Christian, a true believer in Jesus Christ, Easter has huge ramifications and what we believe about Easter does inform and drive and give hope and meaning to every aspect of our lives. So this is a, this is a huge deal. There was once a Muslim college student who came to be a believer in Jesus Christ. His friends were shocked and they asked him, why did you become a follower of Jesus? Here was his response. He said, look, it's simple, really. Imagine that you're walking down a road and you come to a fork in the road and there are two people there to follow as your guide along the way. One of them is dead and one of them is alive. Which one would you follow? See, if you understand that, you'll get to understand it, what moves real Christians, real believers. We believe that Jesus is alive, and he has given us life, and as we go through life, we need someone to follow. So let's look at it this morning. We were, I'm not going to answer all your questions. I may raise some extra ones, right? But we want to look at two questions this morning, especially on this Easter Sunday morning. The first question is this, do you believe the Easter story. That's just the basic fundamental place to start, right? Do you believe the Easter story? You say, well, can you clarify what it is? Sure. You know, the Easter story basically is that a man named Jesus 2,000 years ago lived in the Middle East. At the age of 33, he was killed. The Roman crucifixion nailed to a cross. It was brutal. He died, he was buried, taken down from the cross, buried in a tomb, carved out of a rock. That's how they they do it in the Middle East then. And they rolled a stone, a stone was prepared, and they unhinge it and roll it in front of the entrance of the tomb. Jesus was in the grave, dead, on Friday. The Roman guards were stationed outside the tomb because there was word going around that someone might steal the body. So Jesus' body was in the tomb, Roman guards outside on Friday. It was in the tomb on Saturday. And on the third day, Sunday morning, Jesus bodily rose from the dead. And it is the resurrection of this Jesus is the event that we celebrate on Easter. So, do you believe the Easter story. If you have questions this morning and not sure what you believe about this and you even wonder, can I believe this? Well, you know, you're you're following the path everybody else has followed. I want to take you to that first Sunday morning when the tomb was empty, they discovered it empty, and let's follow some of the first people to encounter this event and watch how they struggled with this very question. They struggle with this question too. Do I believe the Easter story? In Matthew chapter 28, if you brought your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 28. Every Sunday, this is what we do at Grace. I don't have that much to say, so my job is to say what's God said and try and figure that out and how it applies to our lives. So Matthew chapter 28, you're going to get invited into the story. It's the morning they discovered that the tomb was empty. If you want to use a Bible in the rack in front of you, we're on page 835, and I would welcome you to turn there. All right? Children, the kids are in here with us today. I love it. How many of you, if you're under the age of 18, and you have your Bible, and you've already found Matthew 28, say, yep. Yep. Not bad. I heard a very low, old voice just (laughs) respond somewhere over here. 18, yeah. All right. 
Here we go. Here's what it says. It'll be on the screen. Follow it. Now, after the Sabbath, this is the Jewish Sabbath. That was Saturday. After the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. They, went, they had seen where they put the body of Jesus and the stone rolled. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled. Remember, there's a whole huge group of Roman guards around there guarding the tomb. So they're, they're totally freaked out. For fear of this, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. I know why you're here in the cemetery. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going to meet you guys up north in Galilee. He's going to go before you, go up there and meet him in Galilee. There you're going to see him. Now I've told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran. I bet those women did. I bet they giddy up out of there, right? And they scampered. You could see these women just going crazy, running out of there with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Now, you would expect the women when they got to his disciples, right, who were Jesus' disciples. The angel said, go tell his disciples he's risen from the dead. Well, the disciples were a group of 12 men who spent a lot of time with Jesus during the latter part of his ministry and followed him. But the group of disciples had shrunk at this point from 12 to 11 that we're referred to here. And the reason is one of the disciples was Judas. Judas had been with Jesus, traveled with Jesus, ate with Jesus, and Jesus loved on him, but Judas betrayed Jesus, betrayed him. And when Judas saw him going to the cross, overcome with remorse, Judas went out and hung himself. So now the group is down to 11. You'd expect these disciples, when the women showed up to them, to go, yes, we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> they were not expecting the resurrection, okay? They were not expecting Jesus to rise from the dead. In fact, when the women showed up to the disciples to tell them, here was their response. Luke chapter 24 says, they didn't believe them. They did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Okay, guys, 11 guys in a room, and these women came and said, he is risen from the dead. And these disciples said, thank you very much, ladies. We appreciate you. I know you're grieving. You're a little crazy right now. You'll get over it. So they didn't believe it. But two of those disciples, two of them, something tripped, something thought, what if they're... What if they're right? What if they're not crazy? And so Peter and John, two of the disciples, they went headed toward the tomb to check it out themselves. Pick up the story in the Gospel of John, chapter 20. Watch this. So Peter went out with the other disciple. It's John, Peter and John. They went out, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. I love that. The other disciple is John. John's writing this gospel. So it's a nice way of saying, Peter and I were running, and I blew him away and got there first. You know, Peter's, Peter's just a lame, he's, he's lame, but he ended up getting there, right? Verse 5. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen claws lying there, but did not go in. The claws were there. See, when they took Jesus off the cross, they wrapped them all up in these linen claws. Then Simon Peter came, huffing and puffing probably, following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. This is a strange scene. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. 
As yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. See, it's not like the disciples were all sitting around there with their watches going, any time, any time. It's not like they were stationed out the tomb and they had remembered that Jesus said he was going to raise three days later and they're going, any moment, watch this, watch this, when's it going to happen? No, that's not what they're doing. They, 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 it was not in their minds. Like what John O. T. Van said a couple weeks ago, nobody expected no body. <laughs> well, Sunday night, now Peter and John come back to the disciples and they're going, hey man, maybe there's something to this. This is Sunday morning. Sunday night, John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked were where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. The disciples weren't afraid of their own people. The disciples were Jewish. They didn't have this a phobia, a racial phobia. They were afraid of the Jewish religious leaders who had put Jesus on the cross, had killed him. They, they were, they're not going to be running around town, right? They might be next. So their fear of the Jews, verse, Jesus came, here they are all locked in this room, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The reason that was important, his hands, the nails had gone through it, and he showed them the scar. Look, look, it's really me. And his side, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Roman soldier, the last thing to make sure he was dead, came by with a sword and rammed it up through his side, pulled it out and said, oh yeah, he's dead. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So now they're going, I believe it. But there was one of the disciples who wasn't there. All right? One of the disciples wasn't there that Sunday night when Jesus showed up in the room. And it was Thomas. Watch this in verse 24. Now, Thomas, one of the 12 called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see, in his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand to his side, I will never believe. So Thomas, do you believe in the Easter story? I'll never believe it. I'll never believe it, unless I actually see him touch it. Thomas is one of those guys, Thomas was a tough sell. Thomas is looking at the fellow disciples who he'd lived with and been with and was close with all those years. I don't know what's going through his mind. Thomas must have been a really careful thinker, right? Careful thinkers, smart people, often look at the rest of the crowd and say, these guys are idiots and so they're so easily seduced. But I'm smarter than that. Thomas was the kid when um, his mother said, Thomas, if all the other kids jump off a cliff, are you going to jump too? Thomas said, absolutely not. I'm my own man. I think I'm my own. That was Thomas. Thomas, do you believe the Easter story? His answer is, no way. So you understand that from the beginning, from day one, it's not like everybody saw this and went, oh, this is it. No way. That's not the way it worked. Ever since the very first day, people wrestled with this question. And they still do today. Do I believe the Easter story? You heard it on the video. Do you believe the Easter story? I'll bet you anything if we were honest and I went up and down the aisles of this group this morning and asked you, do you believe the Easter story? Some of you would say yes. Some of you would say, I'm thinking about it. The first step in this whole thing is, to, is this question. Do you believe the Easter story? What do you believe? Now, maybe you're wrestling with this thing, and you say, well, how can I believe? How can you believe it? I mean, how can you believe this? It happened 2,000 years ago, right? Maybe you've been in conversations with people. How can you really believe this? It was 2,000 years ago. Are you sure Jesus is really dead? How do you know they didn't take the body? Somebody stole the body. I mean, this is fake news, right? There's fake news now. There was fake news then. I mean, who can you believe anyway? I Really? You listen to the news? Who do you believe anyway? You know what? Those are really good questions. Those are really good questions. 
I wonder, uh, I wonder if you heard this week about uh, the Cathedral of Notre Dame burning. That's amazing. Uh, in Paris. Uh, that, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to believe, isn't it? It's hard to believe that's happened. Um, I don't know if you've been there. I've had the privilege of being there a couple of different occasions. And when I saw some of the footage, I remember being inside and the beauty of that place. It's unbelievable, right? Question for you as a group right here this morning. Raise your hand if you believe that Notre Dame burned last week. Let me see your hands. Hold them up. It looks like about 100% of the crowd. Question. Why do you believe that? Why do you believe that? You say, well, Dan, I, I saw the footage. I, I, I saw that. I saw it on, on the news. Hey, come on. I've seen footage of Bigfoot. <laughs> Sasquatch running through the woods. Seriously. I don't believe it. I've seen, well, there's pictures. Look at that picture. I've seen pictures of Elvis. He's alive in Venezuela. <laughs> hey, I know people, and maybe you've talked to them. They really don't believe a man landed on the moon. All right? So why do, why do you believe? You say, well, come on, Dan. You can check the film. You can check the picture. You know, and plus, there's so many witnesses there. I mean, there's, there's hundreds, of, look at all the people. There's all kinds of people standing around there. And then maybe you read the Ashland Times Gazette, right? Did you read the T Times Gazette? If you happen to see it, there's a, a girl from Ashland, Sarah Repke, and she lives two blocks from Notre Dame right now. And apparently a friend kind of called her, emailed her, or got a hold of her somehow, said, hey, what do you think of uh, Notre Dame burn? She goes, what? Looked out her window two blocks away. Well, yeah, there's a lot of smoke out there. It must be happening, right? So, so you go, well, yes, we know we believe because, look, there's all these witnesses and all these people there, and, yeah, we believe it happens. Come on. Guess what? That's the same way you can believe the Easter story, the exact same way you believe the Notre Dame burn last week. You can. It's the same thing. The gospel writers Luke in particular, who is a historian and a physician. He makes the point at the beginning of his gospel in Luke to say, listen, I carefully investigated these things. These were eyewitness accounts. So the mother of Jesus, and so he is getting eyewitness accounts of all the things that he's writing about. In fact, in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, which Luke also wrote, the historian Luke, he said this, watch. He, Jesus, presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. We know from the records that at least 10 separate occasions, 10 separate occasions, Jesus Bodily, the risen Jesus showed up. He shows up on a road walking with a couple guys. He shows up on the beach. He's making breakfast for the disciples. And they come in and go, wow, it's you. He shows up at a group of people a lot, and he has a meal with them and eats something with them. There was even an occasion in the Apostle Paul wrote that he appeared, are you ready for this, to over 500 people at one time. Uh, Tim Keller says, the resurrection of Jesus is a historical fact much more fully attested to than most other events of ancient history that we just take for granted. If you're wrestling with whether or not you believe the Easter story, um, you can believe the Easter story the same way you believe Notre Dame burned last week. Second point. Do you know what you believe? Do you believe the Easter story? But then you have to go past that, and secondly, it's this. Do you have an Easter story? Now, this is when it really gets exciting. You might get a lot of excitement just out of studying history and regurgitating the facts on a test. 
There are people like that that love history, okay? But this is when the story really gets exciting. Do you have an Easter story? I want you to watch what happened to Thomas. Remember Thomas? He's the disciple that said, I'll never believe it. I'm never going to believe it. Well, here's his story. Uh, be careful what you say. I'll never believe it. You know, God might just show up, right? So Luke chapter, I'm sorry, John chapter 20 again. Watch this. Now it's eight days later, eight days after Thomas said, I'm never going to believe it. You guys are all a bunch of dumb fishermen anyway. He says to his fellow, you know, right? he's probably thinking that because he's smarter than the rest of them. Right? So verse 26, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, peace be with you. Then he says to Thomas, I love this, hey, Tommy. <laughs> he says to Thomas, come here. Put your finger here, see my hands, and put out your hand, put it on my side. Do not disbelieve, Thomas. Believe. And Thomas answered and said this, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus is talking about a bunch of you. How many of you have never seen the bodily resurrected Jesus and put your hands on his side and your hands into his nail-printed hands, but you still believe that he's alive? Say amen. amen. Wow. Blessed are you, Jesus said. John writes his gospel, he says, the next verses, he says, now Jesus did a lot of other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, watch, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing, hang on, you might have life in his name. John says, I don't want you to just believe the record here, I want you to have life in his his name. I want this whole historical event to come alive in you. One person says this, the Easter story needs to come out of history and into experience. It needs to come out of the Bible into your life. So the question for all of us this morning, this is the second question, do you, have you experienced new life? Have you experienced a new relationship with God? When you sing the songs we did earlier about Jesus and, and what he's done in your life and your sins forgiven and a peace with him, it is a real experience for you because you have engaged him. You're like Thomas. You came to the place where I not only believe it happened, but no, this is my Lord. This is my God. See, you can know a lot about God. All you got to do is go to seminary and be, and be, you don't have to be that smart, right? Go to seminary. You can learn lots of things about God. That's not what we're talking about. It's about knowing God. Do you know his love? Do you know his hope? Do you know his peace, forgiveness? Listen, when you have, when I ask this question, do you have an Easter story? I'm not asking if you got religion. I'm asking if you got Jesus. So I got a kick out of it this week. Uh, this story came out this week. A lady on Facebook uh, posted that uh, she was tired of her husband laying around. He's too lazy, and so she got frustrated. So she said, here, I got a grocery list. I want you to go out to the grocery and get this stuff for me. Okay. So he gets up, and here's the grocery list. He sent to the store to get 3% milk, <laughs> seedless strawberries, Wheat thins, the ones in the blue box, unsour cream, diet, diet, Coke, and then she writes, she's, she's nice, right? You might have to ask for it because it's new. <laughs> Mellow cheese and organic Pop-Tarts. <laughs> now, those of you who are laughing, no, well, this is impossible. Those of you who are not laughing, <laughs> 
you need to go to the grocery with your wife, right? <laughs> wow. The best part of the story is she said she turned her cell phone off. <laughs> so when he got to the store, what, what, what? It's impossible. It's the impossible grocery list. You know, listen, there are people who believe in Easter. There are people who say, do you believe in Easter? I believe in Easter. They believe in Jesus. They believe Jesus came and died for their sins. And they also believe. What do you believe? That's a really important question. They believe in the Easter story, but they also believe that trying their best to live like Jesus is what's going to make them right with God. They also believe that doing their best to keep the Ten Commandments, trying to be good to compensate for that grocery list, they're very aware of their grocery list of sins. And so they believe that the way to deal with that is to do their best to be a better person. Listen, that's impossible. That's an impossible task. An old Puritan prayer says this, my sins are too heavy to carry. They are too deep to undo and too real to hide. What do we do? We are desperate people. We are all, including the preacher, we are desperate. What will we do with our sin? Happy Easter. Romans 4, 25. He was delivered. Get this. Could this be true? He was delivered over to death 2,000 years ago for our sins. And he was raised to life 2,000 years ago, for sure, bodily resurrection, for our justification. Is he your Savior? Is he your God? If you believe in Jesus as your Savior, his death was your death. You were in him. His death was for your sin. His resurrection is for your justification. The, the, the penalty's really been paid. You're right with God. And your whole faith and trust is what Jesus did for you, not what you do for Jesus. Then God says he will make you alive. And your whole legal and relational status with God changes forever. It's altered. You're born again. You have new life. You have forgiveness. You have an Easter story. You do. Do you have an Easter story? I love what John Stott, a British theologian, just a brilliant guy, he says this, to believe, watch this, to believe certain facts about who Christ is and what he has done for us is a vital first step. It's the first question we asked this morning. Do you believe the Easter story? But he says, true faith must turn mental belief into a decisive act of trust. Intellectual conviction must lead to personal commitment. So Jesus died for your sins and rose again the third day. Do you believe that? I believe he did. Next question for you. Have you ever been all in with that? Have you ever made a personal commitment to say, I confess my sin, your sin, my sin is what you paid for. You didn't deserve it. It was for me. And so I'm moving past this just information about Jesus died for my sins. No, I'm putting my, in a decisive act of trust and faith, I'm putting all my faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Have you ever done that? See, it's not enough to just believe the Easter story. Do you know in James chapter 2, the demons believe the Easter story. Satan and the demons of hell believe the Easter story, whether your friends do or not. They believe it. And you know, you can get the Easter story right and not be right with God. So we've all seen a movie where, where this scene shows up and you know, she's going to die, right? She's hanging from the cliff. And you know, what, what's the dialogue typically? What's the, what's the dialogue here? You know, trust me, trust me, just grab my hand. 
take my hand, you know, and, and it, it, is, it is a sh- shaky thing. You grab on and trust. Listen, saving faith and trust in Jesus Christ is not about how strong your grip is. It's about whether or not you take his hand. Jesus is the one that saves you. Jesus is the one that cleanses you. Jesus is the one that rescues you and pulls you home. He extends his hand. Have you ever taken it? You can lay all this thing out and say there's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Have you ever signed on? Jesus said, whoever wants to, you you want life, then you die to self. You die to your resume of religious things, and you come and you humbly submit to me. Repent, turn from your sin, and follow me. It's a beautiful thing. Have you ever done that? Can you point to a time in your life when you did this? It's Romans 10. Listen to these verses. It says, if you, see, this is where it gets so personal, right? If you confess with your mouth, not the preacher, not the the church's doctrinal statements, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, like Thomas, my Lord, my God, you confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, I need Jesus. I gotta try. I believe in my heart that He's my only hope for salvation and forgiveness. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. Then you know what? You'll get. You'll be saved. You will be rescued. You will be forgiven. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Can you point to a time when your intellectual conviction, I believe the Easter story, led to a personal commitment to Jesus? I close. The New York Times um, had an interesting article, and it was entitled, The Stories That We Tell Ourselves. Philosopher Todd May was his name. You know, he wrote the article. Philosopher Todd May said this, that often we, we're often telling stories about ourselves. Think about our culture. Think about it. We're always telling stories about ourselves, mainly to make ourselves look good. He says this, we tell stories that make us seem adventurous. We tell stories that make us seem funny or strong. We tell stories that make our lives seem interesting. We're always telling these stories. We're putting it on Instagram. We're telling on Facebook. We're telling our friends. We tell stories to make our lives seem interesting. And we tell these stories not only to other people, but we tell these stories to ourselves. He says, most of us live in this echo chamber that reflects the righteousness of our own lives back to us. I wonder if this morning you're very tired of fabricating your own story. You're tired of writing your own story. You're try, tired of trying to convince yourself you're a righteous person. You're just tired of all that. You need an Easter story. You need an Easter story. When you come to Jesus Christ and say, you write my story. You write over all of my sin forgiven. You write over all my life the righteousness of God. He clothes us in that and he makes us new and he makes us alive. Do you want an Easter story? Then you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and say, Write your story in my life. It's what Jesus said in John chapter 5. This is Jesus. I'm telling you the truth, he says. Okay, listen to Jesus. He's telling you the truth. That whoever hears his word and believes him who sent you, you have eternal life. And when you die, you will not be judged because you will have crossed over from death to life. That's you. That's us. That's me. That's an Easter resurrection story that in Jesus Christ you can cross from death to life. And that's why so many of you sing this morning. So, what do you believe about Easter? What do you believe? What do you believe? You know, I'm not sure what I believe. You came to the right place. We're pressing into these things all the time you got to start here. Do you believe the Easter story? 
But then there's another second very, very important place. Do you have an Easter story? Have you ever moved from intellectual conviction, oh yeah, I believe that's right, to no, he's mine. Let's pray. I, I, I can't let you out of here, and this will only be just a moment. Listen, if you're here this morning, your children here this morning, you're here this morning, and you're going, oh man, God is opening this thing up to me, and this morning, you want an Easter story. You want to say, okay, I have to be forgiven. I have to be taken from death to life. I need a life. And you, right in the quietness of where you sit right now, what you can do is you can cry out to God and say, God, I believe that you came and you died for me and you rose again the third day. I believe that. And I believe that you did it for me. And so today I give you my life. I right now surrender right here, sitting here in this row in this church. I give you, I surrender my life. I turn from my sin, take my list, take it all. I, I, it's, I'm so deeply, you got to forgive me, breathe life into me, and I'm yours. I'm signing on today. I'm all in with you. You pray that right now, and Jesus said, you will cross over from death to life. And this Easter, for the first time, you will have an Easter story. Father, this is a stunning story. May we never get over it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter.